More often than not, war isn't about ethnic or sectarian strife. Instead, it's about control over and access to resources. Take Russia's invasion of Ukraine, for example. Much of it is about having control over the country's vast wealth of mineral and energy resources. And as we move towards more sustainable energy sources, our demand for rare earths will only increase. So how does the playing field look when the world is as divided as it is and rare earths aren't evenly distributed? As Dr. Stephen Lieb, our guest today says, we do live in exciting and very treacherous times and the basic cause is raw materials and a scarcity of raw materials. Goldcore TV host Dave Russell explores these exciting and treacherous times with Dr. Lieb in this 15 minute clip from a recent interview. And if you enjoy this chat with Dr. Lieb, then have a look through our back catalogue from an interview we did with him back in December 2021. Even though it was nearly a year ago, there is a lot that is highly relevant to today, including China's move to a digital currency. But before you dash off, sit back and enjoy this snippet of our yet to be released second interview with Dr. Stephen Lieb. Dr. Stephen Lieb, welcome back to Goldcore TV. Thank you so much, Dave. It's really a pleasure being with you again. It's fantastic to have you back. I really enjoyed our conversation last time, uh, which is nearly a year ago at this stage. But so I want to ask you, like the last time that we spoke, you said that we live in exciting times, but also threatening times in relation to technological developments and also access to raw materials. I just want to look at that again, given what has actually happened since well, we last spoke. I, I, I think that it's, become visible that we do live in exciting and very treacherous times. And uh, the, the the basic cause is raw materials and a scarcity of raw materials. Now, there's a couple of ways of trying to solve a scarcity. I mean, either you develop new raw materials uh, or, or substitutes for raw materials, such as sustainable energies, uh, we all know the list, uh, uh, windmills, <laughs> uh, solar, and uh, hydroelectric to the extent it's possible. I mean, there are even thoughts of going to the moon uh, to get helium-3, which would possibly be a uh, fuel for fusion, not fission, uh, nuclear power. Fusion doesn't leave any waste, any trace at all. It would be the ideal um source of electricity and energy in this world. But all these projects take a lot of current resources. I mean, we can't do very much of anything without using a lot of fossil fuels, uh, a lot of natural gas, well, natural gas, oil, I mean, whatever is available. I mean, these resources are constantly in demand. In fact, even today, with the shortage of fossil fuels that you're seeing, especially in Europe, people are using wood. I mean, mm. it's it's a basically wood has been around. In fact, to show you how little progress, speaking of wood, we've made in terms of uh, developing sustainable fuels. Wood today, I believe, is used uh, it, it produces more energy for this world than does solar. I mean, right. we're not getting very far as far as solar goes, despite all the hype. And, you know, one reason are, is technologies and the fact that there are very few complete supply chains in this world of things that are technological. Uh, a lot of them, you know, what do, what, do, through, what do you mean by that? I mean that the United States, if they want to make, uh, uh, let's say, an iPhone, from scratch, mm. they can't do it. They don't have the uh, uh, supplies. They don't have the materials to do it. I'm not talking about, you know, big materials. I hear this case, I'm talking about small materials. Uh, when, when I wrote uh, in, in 2010, I think, Red Alert, I talked about uh, rare earths and their significance to, the tech, to, to today's technologies. And I said that basically China has rare earths and they are the major source of rare earths. And I didn't realize to what extent that was right uh, because I thought that it was just a question of gearing up and doing things. And, and to some extent it is. I mean, we have a big source of rare earths in the U.S. right now. Uh, it's in Mountain Pass. It's a 
part of California. Can, can I just, before we move on with that, can what's included when you talk about rare earths as uh, a category, what specifically are we talking about there? What okay. type of metals I, are we talking about? I, I, I can make it pretty easy. The, the critical application of rare earths is in magnetism, permanent mm. magnetism. Magnetism and electricity are basically the same thing, which is to say the stronger your magnet the more free electricity that you have. And you can use these permanent magnets. You can make them as small as you want or as large as you want. But the key thing to understand, Dave, is that almost all our modern technology today requires permanent magnets. Okay. And the stronger, the better. I mean, the rare earths replaced sometime around, uh, I guess, the early 1980s, iron as a source of magnetism and it's many times stronger and it's really vital for you know the most advanced technologies because mm. it does provide you this source of uh free energy in very small devices uh you know i'm, I'm putting my hands i'm motioning my hands not because i have a, a tick or <laughs> anything but i'm just pointing to my keyboard mm. there's probably rare earths here and there's certainly rare earths in my computer but but tiny amounts of it but how important are they? Well, I've read uh, a number of books on them. And uh, one researcher, I think from the Air Force, uh, you know, general, yeah, whatever, two or three star general who was in charge of research. And he sort of summed it up by saying, without access to rare earths, your military is basically still functional but at the same level it was in 1979. Wow. That's, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean that it's a difference between the Stone Age and, you know, modern military equipment, but I mean, mm. if you want the latest and greatest, you really need rare earths. And the Chinese have had them all along, which is why you see these stories about these hypersonic missiles, one from China traveling around the earth and I don't know, coming within a few feet of its target on the other side of the, you know, after circling the earth. And you saw General Milley, who's uh, chairman of our Joint Chiefs of Staff, calling that a Sputnik moment. Mm -hmm. And it was immediately walked back, incidentally, because we, we did not want to admit that we were really behind. But we are. And we're behind for two reasons. One, we... we the rare earth supply chain, because I think that's what you started asking Indeed, me about, yes. requires six or seven pretty difficult steps. And uh, primarily it requires, because there are a number of rare earths, it requires you gathering the ore and then splitting it among all the different rare earths. I think there's 17 basic categories of rare earths. And you have to refine that that ore and you have to you know refine each of the uh different categories of rare earths and not all are equal some are there actually people often say rare earths are not rare and that's to some extent true i mean they're not there are many things that are rarer than rare earths in general but there are some rare earths that are reasonably rare actually and one in particular, and I really just learned this and kind of shame on me because I've been writing about this for over a decade, how important this stuff was. And I just always thought it was a question of just refining, yeah. but it's also a question of what your ore body holds, not or all ore bodies that have rare earths have the same collection of rare earths. And it turns out now we're trying to actually, as a side note, now we're finally, after 10 years or 12 years or whatever, trying to uh, uh, refine our own rare earths in this country. Before, believe it or not, we were sending our rare earths, the ore, to China to refine. And that doesn't make a lot of sense if we're, you know, viewing China as, a, as some sort of existential threat, which I don't think they are to our technologies, to our world, et cetera. But, you know, we, we needed the rare earths and um, they were the ones that knew how to refine them. Now there are other people that refine them. Uh, Australian company named Linus and uh, there's a Malaysian company. But the trouble is, and I don't know whether we know this in full, 
But the latest studies that I've seen is that there's one rare earth in particular, and don't ask me to spell the name. I'll give you the <laughs> chemical symbol. It's Y. <laughs> it's just Y. And, and, and if you look under Y chemical symbol, you could it's y y yttrium, yttrium or something. Yeah. I, I, I believe. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And it is really rare. And it's mm. only found in that, as far as they know, it's only found in two ore bodies. And it, the ore bodies in China are filled with it, they have a lot of it. One in Malaysia has some. The one that we have, unfortunately, in California really doesn't have it. Now, this rare earth is one of the most special of all the rare earths. Don't ask me to go through the chemical properties because I, 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 I couldn't. I'd get an F on the test. But I know enough to know that it's very special. It has all these isotopes, et cetera. And it's also critical if you're going to produce the best kinds of permanent magnets. Now, I can't say, you know, how well you'll do without it, but you won't do as well. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, and what and what does this what does this mean practically for the world and the direction that we're going in the global economy in terms of the, there seems to be this um, difference obviously between east and west in terms of their access to ability to refine and ability to use these rare earth and, metals and produce and mm. you know their access to energy. Well, in a nutshell, what it means is that we are facing right now, at least in my opinion two related existential problems and not not to mention you know offshoots of those problems and i'm not trying to talk like a like, like an alarmist here but these problems are if you run out of uh, uh, energy i mean you're going back to the stone age i mean it's that simple if you don't have access to energy i mean you can't do very much mm -hmm. uh and if you don't have access to renewable energies and are able to develop them, well, A, it's going to mean you're going to eventually run out of energy. And it very well could mean, uh, though this is still somewhat controversial, that you'll have a climate crisis. Yeah. Uh, I think it's controversial in the sense that we've probably exaggerated to some extent how soon this will happen, but maybe not. But anyway, it's another incentive and it could be an existential incentive. In other words, I, everybody uses the word existential, but mm -hmm. to, to, to emphasize the gravity of this situation, but it's really there. I mean, there's no world civilization as we know it. If we have run short of energy and if climate change turns out to be much worse than people think and the people that say it's not that serious, who I respect, who are actually very well-known scientists, some of them, but they could be wrong. Uh, and we, we, you know, would have another, we would have a compounded uh, existential, possibly existential crisis. And what this means in a nutshell for the world, and it's so important we wake up. I mean, I literally lose sleep over this, and I'm not making this up. This is more than just an intellectual topic for me. And that's one mm. change that's happened over the last year because this is not something I ever wanted to be right about. Our thanks to Dr. Stephen Lee for joining us on Goldcore TV once again. This was just a short clip of Dave's chat with him. So look out for more from Dr. Lee in the coming weeks, including more thoughts on how Russia's invasion of Ukraine could have been avoided. But tell us, what are your thoughts on access to natural resources? How urgent is the need for cooperation? And how likely do you think it is that we do cooperate? Let us know in the comments below. Whilst you're there, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if all the chat about scarce resources has got you wondering about precious metals, then why not head to goldcore.com, your precious metals experts. We've got a great selection of gold and silver coins and bars, and there's something to suit all types of investors. And we've got a great team on hand ready to help you get started. See you next time. <laughs>